Hello, everyone. It's great to see you in the room. Uh, thanks, uh, Ellie and the other Starkware guys for inviting us to the beautiful city of Tel Aviv. Fortunately, we don't see the sea from here, but it's not so far. So I'm going to present uh, here uh, also two designs, uh, but they are also close to each other. These are hash functions for Starks, but not only for Starks. Also, if you have some other uh, zero-knowledge proof uh, construction, the thing is better than Stark, you can use them as well. So, what's interesting about Poseidon and Starkit, uh, fortunately, Simon also made a great introduction into the need of uh, large fields, inversions, and other uh, elements that we're going to use, so I will skip uh, some uh, more technical parts. So, well, uh, also how it started. It started when we um, read the original paper by Ali and co-authors about uh, uh, ZK Starks, and uh, there were mentioned some uh, AES based hashes which were uh, actually terribly, well, not terribly, but quite often secure. And um, we realized that there is a need of uh, Stark friendly uh, designs or zero knowledge friendly hash functions in general. We also realized that some uh, hash functions like Pedersen hash, which, uh, which many attempted to use because of its uh, collision resistance uh, falling from this logarithm. Uh, hardness uh, actually has many problems as a hash function, among them low premier security and the existence of length extension attack. So uh, we are really looking for, for some interesting designs in uh, zero knowledge friendly uh, hash functions. So we also started with MIMC. Uh, MIMC is a very simple design which like adds, uh, adds a key or a constant. If you don't have a key, then you raise to the power of three, it adds the constant raised to the power of three and so on and so forth. But actually, you need quite many steps to reach the highest possible degree. And it's apparently not so trivial to generalize uh, for a wider state. And there are quite many uh, generalization of MIMS in the wild, which are also terribly insecure. So uh, we're aiming to design something which will be uh, secure over uh, such fields and with very good efficiency. So Poseidon and Starcut. Uh, well, the names, I don't have uh, very nice pictures, but Starcat is just uh, uh, kind of a hero who has a binary number of hands, two to the three. So it's, as you may guess, it's very suitable for binary fields, and Poseidon is more for prime fields. But they are actually very close in design. So what the design is, we uh, suggest uh, working uh, in the sponge mode of operation. Why sponges? Because uh, it's much easier to design a good permutation, a good bijective transformation uh, without uh, uh, weaknesses than uh, if we followed from a block cipher design. So the sponge is used in SHA-3 and many other popular uh, constructions. So the idea is that if you work, for example, in a finite field, whether it's binary or prime, uh, you have some uh, capac so-called capacity elements uh, denoted by C uh, which are not affected by injecting messages, and there are rate elements denoted by R, which are affected. And you are supposed to take out uh, the elements from the rate and not to take out the elements of capacity. So you can imagine that, for example, if you uh, need 128-bit uh, security level and you work in 256-bit uh, prime field, which is popular for many curves, for example, then the capacity is just one element uh, from the field. And the rate can be one, two, three, four, five, as many as you want. And uh, we design the permutation rather aggressively uh, because we encourage people to analyze our permutation to be very close to uh, the security bounds we establish. If they get too close, we may be even to increase the number of rounds, but so far we, can, we think that they, we have pretty good security margin. Well, I, I personally think that uh, aggressive design is a very uh, a nice uh, idea because it encourages uh, people's uh, encourages third-party cardinalities. So basically, we ruled out all the attacks of, on our permutations that uh, uh, require less than 2 to the 128 uh, queries to the permutation, kind of distinguishers and all these sort of things. And so the question is how to design uh, the bijective transformation S so that it's really friendly to Starks or other designs. So, uh, yeah, then what I've talked about already, and with how to structure the function F, 
we're going to use the well-known substitution permutation network here because, well, there are many block ciphers and hash functions using this. There are attack patterns established. We, don't, we do know how to protect from them. So how this SPN, as we call it, uh, looks here. So if you look into this picture, you see there are like T elements entering the permutation. There are uh, nonlinear transformations, uh, which we call S boxes. There are several like T of them. And there are linear transformations, uh, which are denoted by A. And there are also constants. Well, there are different constants, just uh, the, uh, depicted the same, but the constants are really different. So uh, you see there is an interesting difference to what um, the uh, competitors have just presented is that uh, in the middle of our network, of our permutation network, of our bijective transformation, we use only one S-box instead of many. The reason is uh, that uh, we can get much uh, better efficiency here, and we also can protect better, uh, we can protect from uh, the attacks with uh, as much, uh, as many rounds as before. So the, uh, the crucial idea, the crucial optimization is that our permutation can be as wide as you need. It can absorb as many messages per call as you want, but you still pay only one S box per round. And the number of rounds remains pretty much the same when you increase the permutation width. So S boxes are uh, friendly to almost everyone. They are friendly to R1CS. They are friendly for stars. They are friendly to regular code because we don't use uh, we use only low degree exponents or uh, just the inversions, which are like divisions, which are also fast. And uh, well, and the S box, one S box in the middle, it's because we uh, explored all the possible, all the existing cryptanalysis methods since 1990 or older. Uh, regular statistical methods are prevented by, well, methods like differential or linear cryptanalysis, they are prevented by. Uh, outer rounds with full S box layer. We don't need many of them. We know exactly how many rounds we need. Well, actually, six rounds are sufficient, but we use eight just in case. And um, the other most powerful attacks in our case are algebraic cryptanalysis attacks, which Ludovic will uh, show just after myself. And we'll see that um, the algebraic attacks are as efficient as, uh, well, they all depend on the algebraic degree of the permutation. The more rounds we have, the degree grows but uh, the degree grows more. And actually the degree grows as good for S boxes X, X to the five or X to the three. It grows as good uh, uh, depending well whether you have one S box or two S boxes or T S boxes. So why use many S boxes if you can use only one? Well, basically we do use only one and we here we optimize uh, a lot and we uh, kind of can save the significant factor when we design, uh, when we write down constraints or algebraic intermediate representation. So uh, this is the design that works for both prime and binary fields. So the same analysis, almost the same analysis, just a bit of analysis adds up when you use the binary fields, but in general, uh, the design, uh, all, all the cryptanalytic methods, they work pretty much the same. So when, also when you use exponent from x3 to x to the 5, you use pretty much the same analysis, just the numbers are changed in formulas. So we have simple pseudocode, we have simple regular code. We, already, we have low degree exponents, so we expect good performance in uh, fast languages like C++. We have already a number of implementations available. There are people coded uh, Poseidon in uh, in Rust for bulletproofs and there are other applications, so there are implementations in Go, Sage, C++, Circom. Uh, we support Merkle trees of different areas, so if you really want to have fewer layers in your Merkle trees, we can do that. We can uh, give you a Merkle tree with the uh, ART4, with ART8, as many as you want. We support long messages with proper padding. So, really instances, so the difference is so in Poseidon, we work all the prime fields. The field is like 255 bits for 128-bit security. And S box is x to the 5 for the most curves, for the most fields that arise from uh, elliptic curves where we really need them. And in StarCut, the binary field, uh, it's like 63-bit or 127-bit. 
uh, depend on whether your uh, depend on the architecture you plan to use because in some architecture you can uh, have fast uh, binary felt multiplications embedded uh, and text boxes just text to the three. So uh, how to you form in trees? Uh, the use is really simple. So here is the permutation. Uh, that we're going to use, and uh, if, for example, the three is ART three, then use permutation of width four. If uh, use ART two, then permutation has width three, and basically you just take one element of the output and glue them together for the next layer, and so on and so on. So that's that's terribly simple. You just have to not to forget about using the zero element in the beginning uh, for the first element of the permutation. Uh, the question is, how is it good in Starks or uh, other proof systems. Actually, there is some trick that, well, in Stark, we really want that the constraint system doesn't change over the round. So, and we actually need only, uh, in our construction, we need uh, only two different uh, uh, constraints, basically. So for the full round, where uh, the S boxes are for every element, we use, uh, well, when the S box is x to the five, we, need, we use uh, a constraint system that links together of the inputs of uh, S boxes in adjacent rounds. And there are degree five equations over two T variables. The T is the width. Uh, and uh, for the partial S box layer, you also use the inputs of the S boxes, but there it's a bit tricky. So you uh, group together the two T S boxes over two T rounds. So you don't use uh, the inputs to the S boxes that are non-existent. You use only uh, two T rounds here, uh, and you again use uh, you get uh, degree five equations here. So, uh, sorry, this is polynomial degree three that you should uh, that's for x to the three. So you should replace it with x to the five. Actually, uh, it depends on which S boxes you use. And uh, so here are the numbers. Uh, I uh, took the simplest possible. Uh, ET metric where basically I, uh, I multiply the width of, uh, of the uh, primitive by the number of steps we do, by the degree, and by uh, um, the number of layers in the tree. So basically if you use Xbox X to the three, uh, then uh, you uh, have uh, uh, only, uh, the cost is only like two to the 13 or something which is compared to the cost of uh, to the 26 for SHA-256 or to the 16 for Pedersen hash. So I just don't have the numbers for uh, uh, vision and hand to compare it, but yeah, I would love to add them as well here. And you can also use 127 bit as boxes or 31 bit as boxes if uh, they are good enough for your Stark. Uh, Yes. Uh, yeah, in uh, SNARKs there is a pretty similar station, but it's uh, apparently simpler, so you can use a bit wider constraints really through S boxes. And there are also a uh, nice number of constraints. So you see that Poseidon, our prime field design, compares favorably to Pedersen hash and uh, to RESC if we use uh, the specified number of rounds, if we use Merkle tree for over a billion of elements, uh, and uh, with Merkle trees of different territories, you get this. Uh, quite nice results. So there are already uh, applications. There are several projects declared that they plan to use uh, Poseidon or Starcut. So uh, Sovereign plans to use it for checking revocation status in zero knowledge. Uh, Dusk Network plans to use it for uh, checking out the uh, stakes in zero knowledge. And there is a DEX protocol that we've seen that already announced its plan to use uh, Poseidon for uh, fast checks. So. Uh, yeah, join them, and thank you for your attention. We have time for questions. Yes. Uh, there is a matrix multiplication plus addition of a constant. The constant yeah. must be different each same round, same but the matrix is the same. Matrix. You can use the same matrix. You can use the same matrix, yes. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay, then thank you, Dimitri.